This next article, the headline says, gaining access to anyone's browser without them even visiting a website. I apologize to the people who click the story show notes or viewers who are watching on a video platform. I don't know why this author hates capitalized letters. I don't know what the trauma is there. I'm also not sure what's up with the cat that's actually kind of distracting when it's like you're in the way. I'm trying to read this, but anyways. I found this through the TechLore forums and the person who posted it had a great summary, so I'm gonna quote them. Arc Browser has a boost feature wherein you can apply custom styling and scripting to specific web pages, essentially built-in user styles and user scripts. Boosts are stored in Google's Firestore and tied to one's mandatory Arc account via a user ID. By exploiting the way boosts are saved, it was possible to tie the boost to another user ID that is not your own, thus effectively granting you a remote code execution. This vulnerability was patched on August 26th. Additionally, the security researcher raised privacy concerns given how the domain pattern matching for Boost contradicts ARC's privacy policy, which says we don't know which websites you visit. The person who posted the summary says, I've only done a quick summarization of this pretty insane vulnerability, so be sure to give the full write-up by this author a read. It just goes straight into the technical details. So I think that summary is probably the best summary. I know ARC is really, really popular lately. Jesus Christ, is it already almost the holidays? I want to say at the beginning of the year, Jonah did a video. I think it was like a, a browser tier list or something, but he was talking about browsers and he mentioned that ARC is a really popular browser that everybody's talking about right now. And I've looked at the homepage and I see why. It definitely looks really interesting and it has a lot of features that I think a lot of people would get value out of, but it's not open source. And normally we are not the type of people to be like, you know, oh, everything has to be open source all the time. But there are certain things where you're putting a lot of faith in that service. Things like operating systems, browsers, messengers, like there's just certain things where it's uh, password managers, like you're, you're putting a lot of faith of very sensitive data into these devices or, or these services. And Arc is just, it's very new. I think it just came out of beta like earlier this year, I think. So it's very new. It's not open source. It may end up becoming a really powerful, great choice, but... Right now, we're seeing there are clearly some some kinks still to be worked out. So for all the ARC fans, I'm not trying to talk trash. I'm just saying, be cautious. Don't do anything sensitive. We're clearly still figuring out what does and doesn't work with this browser. I think that open source means different things in different areas. For example, I see no value from a privacy and security perspective, right? I still see value from a philosophical argument of open source software, but I don't see value from a privacy and security perspective to something like a open source NLE. Like, I don't see the inherent benefit to Caden Live over DaVinci Resolve just because Caden Live is open source, for example, with the exception, again, of the philosophical argument of having the code public and having it freely available. And it's always going to be more community oriented than anything Blackmagic will ever do with DaVinci Resolve. And I think that does have value. But again, in the context of privacy and security, I don't really see any difference between the two pieces of software. I do agree that operating systems generally are a lot more transparent and a lot better for users when they're open source, but that also doesn't mean they're inherently more private and secure. But I think operating systems are an area where that transparency is very nice to have and it, you see the benefit of that. And then browsers are another place too where, yeah, I'm always going to lean towards an open source browser. And my next point is, are the regular alternatives open source? With operating systems, the answer is no. If you're using an open source operating system, you're not using what's generally available to the default user. Versus a browser, most browsers are built on at least open source technologies, and you could say Arc is the same thing. But I think if you deviate even a small step away from a default browser, you're probably using an open source browser. And so I feel like the accessibility of the open source browser is just so easy and it's compatible on every operating system. And it's such a easy, frictionless migration that people can do. So I think for me, it's also the balance of like how easy is it to use the open source alternative versus using the regular proprietary system that most people will default to using. Towards the beginning, you were saying something about like browsers and, and like how easy it is to switch. I'm running into a surprising number of people these days that like when I meet new people and like once I get to know them and I'm comfortable and I'm like, the topic comes up and I'm like, hey, you should check out Brave. I'd say about 25% of the time, they're just like, oh, I already use it. And this is kind of like those people who are like, well, why did they add stickers and gifts and signal? Because those are the things that get people on signal. I think I mentioned years ago, like I have one specific friend that I spent probably a year or two trying to get her on signal to no avail. And then literally one conversation with my wife, which 
they were not friends, by the way. Like they, I think they'd met each other once or twice, but they weren't like me and her were friends. It's one conversation with my wife. And the next thing I know, that woman is messaging me from Signal. And I'm like, what did you say to her? And she's like, oh, I just told her about like, there's gifts and we can do group chats and like this, that, and the other. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like that was the moment that changed my mind where I'm like, okay, people do not give one hot shit about the privacy and security. They want the features. If you make something that is mainstream friendly, people will use it. And again, making it accessible to like asking someone to switch their entire operating system on their computer to be an open source one is a big ask. Asking someone to just swap their browser to an open source one and it looks and functions the same. If anything, it actually might be a little bit better because a lot of the open source browsers actually respect the users better. That is a much easier selling point. Thanks for watching this clip. It's actually taken from the Surveillance Report podcast, which is our full length podcast where we talk about privacy and security news every single week. We post it on YouTube as a video. We also post it on PeerTube for those of you who don't like YouTube. And we also post it as an audio version that you can find on every major podcasting app as well as just RSS. Check us out uh, either here on the screen somewhere or at surveillancereport.tech and stay up to date out there so you can keep yourself and the people around you safe.